Are you thinking about migrating from Terraform to OpenTofu? What are the possible benefits? What are the drawbacks? And can you migrate back? Those are the questions we'll be trying to answer in this week's Terraform Tuesday. Hey everyone, I'm Ned Belavance, nedinthecloud.com, and for today's Terraform Tuesday, we're actually going to be looking at a fork of Terraform called Open Tofu. So I guess you might say that my Terraform tacos are filled with sofritas? Like I mentioned in the introduction, we're going to look at why Open Tofu exists, what the differences are between Terraform and Open Tofu beyond the licensing, and how to migrate from one to the other. I've made sure to include chapters in this video, so if all you really care about is the migration bit, jump to the migrating to open tofu chapter or the timestamp that appears now. For those of you who'd like a little more background, I invite you to pull up a chair as I spin a bit of a yarn. In August of 2023, HashiCorp decided to change the licensing for their core products from Mozilla Public License 2.0 to Business Source License 1.1. The change was introduced via a commit on each GitHub repository and took effect with the next subsequent release of each product. Terraform was included in the list of impacted products, and some folks were nonplussed about the licensing change. Now, I'm not here to relitigate this whole thing. This is not a channel for a bunch of drama. If you want to hear people spilling the tea on Hashi and the state of open source in general, there's plenty of folks happy to ramble at you for hours. HashiCorp's interpretation of BSL was simply that you could continue to use their community products for free if you weren't creating a product that competed with their paid solutions. And the use had to be like for like. So you couldn't use Vault Community Edition to create a competitor to HCP Vault or Vault Enterprise, and you couldn't use Terraform Community Edition to create a competitor to Terraform Enterprise or HCP Terraform, previously known as Terraform Cloud. You could, however, use Terraform Community Edition to create a competitor to HCP Console. That was fine. If you really want to dig into all the details, you can check out their blog post and the BSL FAQs that I've linked down below. Terraform is by far HashiCorp's most popular software, and many companies and projects have worked to fill in the gaps that were not covered by the community version of Terraform, whether that was automation, state management, policy enforcement, or testing, there is a rich ecosystem of Terraform adjacent projects and products that suddenly felt under threat by the change to BSL. At the same time, there were some open source purists who rightly identified that BSL is not true open source, and now Terraform was under a source available license. Organizations like the CNCF required that their projects only use OSS tools and components, and so they found themselves in a bit of a jam. So a group of folks in the IAC ecosystem got together and wrote a manifesto demanding that HashiCorp revert back to an OSS license or they would fork Terraform. HashiCorp politely declined to do so, and thus OpenTofu was born. Like I said before, there's a non-zero amount of drama surrounding the birth of OpenTofu, HashiCorp's subsequent response, and just general internet sturm und drang. I am not going to get into it. Instead, let's look at where OpenTofu is now. OpenTofu was forked from the latest version of Terraform that still carried the previous MPL license. So that equates to roughly 1.5. something. The current version of OpenTofu as of this recording is 1.7.2. So everything I'm going to mention is in regards to that version. Likewise, the current version of Terraform right now is 1.8.5. So when I make comparisons between the two, those are the versions I'm referring to. The folks at OpenTofu have been trying to keep feature parity with newer releases of Terraform, but that is starting to diverge a bit. Any configuration that was valid before Terraform 1.6 should work just fine with OpenTofu. 
If you're on Terraform 1.6 or newer, then you may have some small amount of rework, depending on what features you've leveraged in the newer versions. I have a blog post that I've tried to keep up to date as new minor versions of each project are released. I've linked it down below, but here are the big features and comparisons. Both Terraform and OpenTofu have introduced a testing framework that makes use of run blocks, tftest.hcl files, and a test command. Terraform includes mock data, which OpenTofu doesn't yet, but that is on the horizon. Other than that, the two are basically the same in regards to the testing framework. Both Terraform and OpenTofu introduced removed blocks, looping for import blocks, and provider-defined functions. The removed block syntax is a little bit different, but otherwise I believe all of these features are identical, at least in implementation. OpenTofu released state encryption with 1.7, and this feature does not exist in Terraform, and I don't think it ever will. There's some interesting new discussion on protecting or omitting certain values from state and plan files in the Terraform repository, but I wouldn't expect any implementation of that until 1.10 at the earliest. So basically, OpenTofu and Terraform are largely the same from an operational standpoint. The code sitting behind it will be different, but unless you're a developer trying to contribute, that shouldn't concern you too much. How about we check out a migration? I'm gonna start with a simple project that deploys an Azure resource group and a virtual network using Azure Storage as the backend. Looking inside the configuration, we've got a terraform.tf file that defines the required providers and backend. And there's a main.tf file that defines the Azure provider, resource group, and it uses a module from the public registry to deploy the virtual network. I've already deployed this config to Azure so we can pull up the terminal and run Terraform state list to see the resources under management. Now that that's done, let's migrate over to OpenTofu. The good folks at OpenTofu have published a migration guide that walks you through the process depending on which version of Terraform you're currently using. I'm on version 1.8.5, so I'm following those directions. The first step is to make sure there are no pending changes from the Terraform side. So I'll run a Terraform plan just to make sure. After a few moments, it will come back as no changes. There's a warning from the module, but we can ignore that. Next up, I'm going to back up my state data just in case something goes sideways. If you're using Azure Storage, make sure you have versioning enabled and maybe even take a snapshot of the blob. You can also run Terraform state pull and direct it to a file for a quick and dirty backup. I wouldn't recommend this for production workloads where there might be sensitive information in the state data, but for a demonstration, it's just fine. And we can use this copy of the state data for comparison as well once we migrate to OpenTofu. This configuration isn't using the testing framework or removed blocks, so I don't have to worry about accounting for those features. OpenTofu had to set up their own registry for providers and modules because HashiCorp changed the licensing terms of their public registry to prevent non-Terraform binaries from accessing it. Again, I'm not going to point fingers here or get catty. The practical upshot for you is that moving to OpenTofu means using their registry. Looking at the required providers and modules, if the source uses a fully qualified name that includes registry.terraform.io, you'll need to remove that and either use the shortened name or replace it with registry.opentofu.org. OpenTofu will still work if you pull providers from the Terraform public registry, but you might technically be violating the terms and conditions of the registry. Better safe than sorry. With that out of the way, I'll run some OpenTofu commands. I've got version 1.7.2 installed locally, and I'm going to start by running tofu in it. This should download the provider plugins and modules from the OpenTofu registry and configure the backend. Looking in the .terraform directory and inside of the provider subdirectory, there's now a folder for the HashiCorp registry and one for the OpenTofu registry. Also, if I look in the modules.json file in the modules directory, 
let me uh, prettify that JSON. There we go. Uh, the source for the module has switched to the open tofu registry. Let's check out the state data too. I'll run tofu state pull and that will print the state to the terminal. Looking at the Terraform version, it says 1.7.2. If I open up the state data backup, that says 1.8.5. However, the source for the modules and the providers still says registry.terraform.io. Once we run a successful tofu apply, that will update as well. With the initialization done, I'm going to run tofu validate to make sure open tofu is cool with my configuration. If any issues occur, it might come down to slight differences in implementation of features. My validate comes back clean, so I'm ready to run plan to see if any changes are listed. There shouldn't be, but I want to make sure. My plan comes back with no changes, but if you do see changes, you may want to roll back to Terraform or try and troubleshoot what is different about the configuration. Lastly, I'll run tofu apply to finish my migration by updating the state data. Once that's complete, let's take a look at the state data to see what's different. I'll run tofu state pull, and once the state data loads, the main thing you'll notice is that the registry source has switched to open tofu for everything. To test out a change, I'll update the managed by tag on the resource group from Terraform to open tofu and run a tofu apply. This will prove that open tofu is now managing our infrastructure. After a few moments, the apply is complete, and now our infrastructure is using open tofu. That's not too tough, huh? In case you were wondering, migrating back to Terraform is essentially the same process. Make sure there's no pending changes, back up your state data, and then run Terraform in it, plan, and apply, and you'll be right back where you started. If you've started using some new open tofu features, that might complicate things, especially if you've enabled state data encryption. You'll need to remove that before migrating back to Terraform. This is a tough question, and it's one that I struggle to answer because honestly, and I know this is a trite answer, but it depends. So rather than trying to give you a straight yes or no answer, since I don't think there is one, instead, here are some questions to consider. Number one, are you running on HCP Terraform today? Open Tofu doesn't work with HCP Terraform, so this is a non-starter. You're sticking with Terraform. Are you running on a Terraform automation platform like Spacelift or M0? BSL versions of Terraform are not available on these platforms. So if you want to take advantage of some of the new features introduced after the BSL change, you might want to move to open tofu. Are you working on a project that requires OSS tools only? Well, in that case, I guess you're moving to open tofu. Are you building an HCP Terraform competitor for paid public consumption? In that case, yeah, you're going to need to move to open tofu. Are you using Terraform to build out your infrastructure and don't really care about this whole OSS battle? I guess, well, my first follow up question would be whether there's a killer feature of open tofu you really want. Right now, that's really just state encryption. If that doesn't move the needle for you, then I don't see a reason to migrate and you're probably just going to stay on Terraform. If there is a killer feature, then by all means, migrate. And finally, has your legal team decided that BSL is no good for your organization? Well, that's out of your hands and above my pay grade, so to open tofu it is. You can also opt to stay on Terraform pre-BSL and just excuse yourself from the whole debate. You won't be getting any security patches. That ended on December 31st, 2023. But my point is that you can sit on 1.5 and just wait to see what happens with that whole IBM acquiring HashiCorp thing, which is uh, another can of worms that I just did not want to get into right now. I hope in this video, I've shown you how easy it is to move from Terraform to open tofu. While it's not a drop-in replacement, you will need to do a little homework and analysis. It's also a relatively low risk and reversible operation. 
you could easily pilot open tofu on some development environments and see if it meets your needs. That being said, my bottom line is that I would stick with the status quo unless there's a compelling reason to migrate. Most engineers and admins I know already have enough on their plate, and migrating to a new tool, even one as simple as migrating from Terraform to OpenTofu, is still a migration and is just one more thing to worry about. Unless there's a clear business benefit or a legal compulsion, I wouldn't make the move. Now that's not to denigrate or cheapen what the Open Tofu folks have done. They've successfully forked an incredibly popular project and made the migration as easy and simple as possible. Kudos to everyone working on the project. You deserve it. As both of these projects evolve and inevitably diverge from each other, I'd like to revisit the topic and see if my thinking has changed. Until then, thank you so much for watching. If you like what I do, maybe you'd like my podcast, Day 2 Cloud. On the show, my co-host Kyler Middleton and I have compelling conversations with practitioners and SMEs about all manner of cloud-related technologies. I especially enjoyed our recent conversation with Hazel Weekly about transitioning to a leadership role and realizing you're out of your depth. That'll do it for today. Until next time, keep calm and open tofu on? Sure, why not? Bye. All I'm saying is this whole thing, bananas. That's so dumb.